guys, it's Elon from Inside Fighting, and I'm here with one of my favorite people, Milos Karakulic. And he's been nice enough today to come on board and work with me so I can show you guys something I've wanted to show for a long time. And that is the biggest misconceptions about knife training, including the system I train in Philippine martial arts. So thank you. Pow, pow. Inside, inside fighting. Yeah, dangerous, dangerous martial arts. All right, so what I want to talk about today, and this is something we've actually both discussed in the past. And by the way, guys, just so you know, there's a follow-up video to this that's going to be on Milos' channel. You've got to go check it out. The link will be in the description below. Do it or I'll attack you. <laughs> okay, bottom line, here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about Filipino martial arts, knife fighting systems, all these different systems, and some of the things I see that are, after studying a lot of knife fights, watching video, watching tape, what people keep getting caught in, I want to discuss some of the mistakes that I see in the way we train in the approach to knife fighting. So one of the main things that people love talking about, and by the way, excuse the rain, we're in Florida, there's a hurricane every three hours here. 14 people have just drowned in the past three minutes. That's why it's green and we have palms. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so if you look at Filipino martial arts, you look at knife fighting, it's very pretty. A lot of it's about flow, meaning if he attacks me at angle one, we start getting into a flow, and I've shown this before my channel, I can attack at angle two, I can attack three, and now we look like, oh, we're training, oh, he cut him at the corner, he gets fast, right? It looks very slick, right? It looks like we're developing a lot of skills for actual knife fighting. What we're actually developing there is a very key tool set, a, a tool set that has to do with quick reaction timing and flow, right? But we're not really dealing with intense aggression, we're not really dealing with what I find the most common attacks to be. So the way this translates to empty hand is when he's doing these drills, now you can have the knife, yep. and he's gonna, we're gonna still do the same drills. Like, right, okay, now here I'm attacking his eye. Now I'm coming under, okay, there. I'm getting, I'm getting a sensitivity for where the knife might be, right? Okay, and so that's not how real knife fights happen. Uh, in studying tons of tape, what happens in real knife fights are two specific attacks. This is in jail, this is on the street, this is uh, any time I've noticed people are attacked by knife. Now that attack is one of two things. Either in a traditional saber grip, 90% of the time there's a grab, and a repeated aggressive stab, or there's a grab, and there's an overhand ice pick grip stab. Why? Because when people have a knife, they're trying to kill you, they're angry. They want to cause you severe harm. And so there's an emotional element to it and what they're doing is they're aggressively attacking. These are single line attacks that are repetitive and aggressive. They're not pretty flow. Okay, so you have to deal with two things here that are very hard to deal with. And I would argue as simple as this looks, it's much harder to deal with and cope with than someone who's flowing with you nicely. Okay, even though there's more angles here, there's more flow here, this does not represent any form of reality. Okay, so we want to spend our time training what's actually going to happen. So when Milos grabs me, the first thing I have to do when I'm training is see how he's actually controlling me. If I try and move, he's not letting me. His arm is actually coming back, indicating the attack. These are things that are wrong in knife fighting, but are very hard to deal with. See how much he's loading up? People will tell you never do that. Never pull your punch back. Never pull the knife back. Just attack from here. But the reality is when he comes and hits now, that's very hard. Even with me resisting, it's coming through. It's cutting. Okay? So that's the type of force you have to deal with. You see that repeated. It's extremely hard to deal with this. And because he has this, and what says, just run, just run, just run. If I try and run here, I can't. Okay. <laughs> rest of the rest of the episode shirts off. <laughs> I have a new That's shirt. how hard he's grabbing. I, oh, I gotta be tall. Oh, okay, good. Okay, okay. Oh wait, I need, I need it because you're grabbing me. Yeah. Cut. We're putting on a shirt. Okay, so uh, that's uh, his Wing Chun grip right there, which is when this guy grabs you. Just so you know, it feels like he's actually eating your skin with his hand. Okay, so again, the bottom line, I can't get away here. By the way, it's his shirt. This is the nicest material I've worn in a long time. I think you should sell these. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, so there's a couple of things here, and I'm going to do this slowly. The big mistake is if you haven't trained for this kind of aggression, he's actually going to be pushing me back. I have to cope with balance. I have to cope with a lot of things here. Okay, so 
the first and most important thing is survival thank you, of the, the grip and the knife attack. Meaning, I have to right away be able to offline this. This is where your training is very important. You can't just block like this. This will come right through and cut my neck, right in my karate. I also need to be able to get to his face and offload him some way to cause some kind of response. Meaning if I'm just focused on the blade and the wrist, he's coming through. But if I can turn the face, this becomes weaker. Okay? You have to train this under pressure. Meaning when he's hitting me now, he's doing it slow on tape, but he's doing it hard. He's doing it with force. If he trained it nicely, I'm never going to get a sense of how to actually defend this. I'm never going to feel that pressure. So the first thing, if you look, I'm resting on his arm here. Why? Because if he starts really grinding and turning up and driving, at least I can drive down here and start coming in. Now, there's a concept I love to discuss. It's called stickiness. So if I get tactical control of his arm when he hits, I do not want any type of retraction, him to pull back again. And for me to lose control, we're resetting here. So every time he hits, I have to counter aggression, as irrational as this sounds, with extreme aggression back. I call it stickiness. So when he comes in with this, I have to follow as it's going back. I have to keep this as a way as possible. Now I'm trying to get a control. Now options open up. This could be me grinding into his eyes. This could be me, me coming under, double gripping the knife, driving with my head, trying to get it to the ground. Maybe you're driving it down. But this is ugly, it's dirty, and it's messy, and it works. But there's no set response you notice what I did, I reacted to where his body went, meaning that if we did it again, and his body went a different way this time, so I'm trying to control the knife, it's going back, I try to come over to get a double grip, here I feel like I'm getting his wrist this time. Right now I might kick him in the groin, and I might try to drive him down to the ground or go for a disarm here, but it's never, and now I have his arm here, I might drive him down, but it's never easy. And the only way you can train it is with that type of force and aggression. Let's just look at the sewing kit, what I call a sewing kit. Uh, so, this is one of the worst. See how even here he's still hitting me? See how I have to deal with that? So again, one second, sorry. Again, the same idea, and these are coming through by the way a little bit. I would have a little bit of cuts. That's just part of the fight. You're gonna get cut. What I wasn't doing there, just to show you guys, is I'm focusing all my energy here into the bicep and the form. It needs to go to the face. Okay, I need this. But I also need this. This is what keeps the arm away. Yep. Without controlling the face, this will continue to come. You see he's driving me back? This sucks. Again, look at the force he's putting in. Train this way. So I'll just very slowly show you what, again, this is the most important thing. And it works. It really works. Now, again, knife when you want to get mean. Yeah, you want to get in the eyes. I know people say, oh, eye gouges. I'm not aiming for the eyes. I'm aiming for the face, and whatever I grip, as I extend, I'm, and again, it's that forward sticky pressure. Yeah. Because even if you have a knife, and I'll do it to you, uh, I'll grab you. Yeah. Once that comes into my eye, I cannot stab here. Yeah. I'll try and hurt it very hard. Yeah. See? And again, it's that repeated, yeah, this. Once this is here, there's range. Even if you just wanted to disengage and yeah. run now, I lose yeah. the grip. So that's how you have to train it. It's the number one mistake I see. Thank I you for being a monster. And, <laughs> and I tell you guys, like I go in, it hurts. So this is how you can see that it really works. What are you explaining? I did full force. Look, okay, I, I have marks. Yeah. And you see when he immediately with the sewing grip, when he went after my face, this is what happened. Yeah, and then you, if you want to double grip, if you want to keep yeah. going for the face, I don't really care what you do. Like this, this type of stuff actually does work, by the way, if you can disrupt yeah. before you do it. But it's all about disruption, stickiness, and those are the two main principles. Disruption and stickiness. What I mean by stickiness is that when I get to here, as he retracts, my body follows. Yeah. And it feels bad for me as an attacker because this gets out of use because this is my receiver. I only trust in this. Yes, and by the way, it works with a punch. If he throws a punch and then he retracts and I follow from a grappling perspective, he can't throw another punch no. here. From a grappling perspective, now I can go into the choke and become a control. Yep. 
It's the same philosophy for everything. That's why next training makes you good. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Watch the next one. Inside fighting. Milos is going to be. Milos <laughs> Milos is going to be training the next one. So watch it.